Shenzhen Jewelry Heist, Owner Vanishes with 400 Kilograms of Gold, State Media Refute Claims Tesla to cut 10% of global workforce amid China overcapacity, Latin American job challenges Expert, more companies likely to leave China as pressures grow What is the greatest crime of the CCP today? It's all covered in today's China Truths Shenzhen Jewelry Heist, Owner Vanishes with 400 Kilograms of Gold, State Media Refute Claims Amid an economic downturn in China, a significant trend has emerged where numerous gold shop owners across the country have absconded with large quantities of gold. This trend was highlighted on April 15 when chaos erupted at the Millions Jewelry Store in Shenzhen's Luahu District, captured in videos that showed large crowds and CCP special police in riot gear attempting to control the situation. A man in one video claimed that a shop owner had fled with 400 kilograms of gold valued at approximately 200 million yuan. The next morning, Jinshir Data, a round-the-clock financial news service, confirmed through local interviews that a merchant had indeed escaped with gold worth 200 million yuan. A Shuebei gold supplier indicated that the fugitive was an upstream supplier and the victims were smaller downstream retailers, who had been lured by below market prices and risky speculative deals that failed amidst rising gold prices. Over the past five years, the Shuebei market has seen numerous instances of shop owners fleeing, sometimes leaving behind millions in unpaid debts. These incidents, though severe, pale in comparison to the scandal at the Shuebei shop, which set a new record for the amount of gold involved, significantly affecting public opinion. In response, state media quickly began refuting the rumors. On April 16, state media reported that Millions Jewelry was still operating, and the owner denied fleeing, maintaining that the shop was open. However, a subsequent media visit revealed an almost empty store, with only a few people sitting around a table drinking tea. A few employees present who insisted the business was still operational but declined to give interviews. An industry insider commented that the store had been out of stock for several days. State media also reported that the store's financial issues were due to a recent freeze on its bank account by non-local police, which led to a customer attempting to reclaim items, sparking further rumors. Despite these official statements, the accounts seemed inconsistent with the scenarios depicted in the circulated videos. Tesla to cut 10% of global workforce amid China overcapacity, Latin American job challenges. Tesla, once heavily reliant on China, its main market, plans to cut 10% of its global workforce due to overcapacity issues within the country. This decision, revealed in a leaked internal memo from CEO Elon Musk on April 16, responds to decreasing sales and intense competition in the electric vehicle industry. Musk noted on X platform, about every five years, we need to reorganize and streamline the company for the next phase of growth. This restructuring will impact Tesla's operations in both the United States and China, hitting sales, technology, and engineering sectors the hardest. Notably, Drew Baglino, head of battery development, and Rohan Patel, vice president of public policy, are also exiting the firm. Despite investor concerns, Musk thanked the departing executives via a social media post. Reports indicate that layoffs are widespread across U.S. service centers, mainly affecting sales and technical roles, with one location dismissing all front desk staff. In California, a project manager shared a LinkedIn spreadsheet listing over 140 laid-off employees, primarily engineers, now job-seeking. Tesla Germany has countered local media reports claiming 3,000 job cuts out of approximately 12,000 employees, clarifying ongoing adjustments to align with Musk's directives. In Germany, where labor laws are stringent, Tesla faced criticism from IG Metal for not consulting the Works Council as per local norms, leaving about 1,000 temporary workers particularly vulnerable to layoffs. The layoffs come as Tesla faces robust competition in China from local brands like BYD, which have triggered a price war, sharply cutting Tesla's global sales and increasing costs for new models and AI technology. In related news, after cutting funding for a much-anticipated budget car, dubbed Model 2, which was set to boost market growth with a $25,000 price tag, Tesla confirmed related layoffs. 
Globally, the issue of Chinese overproduction and export of low-priced goods continues to disturb various economies. Latin American metalworkers, hit by cheap Chinese steel imports, are calling for higher tariffs, supported by data from the Latin American Steel Association, Alicero, showing a significant rise in steel imports from China, stressing the need for fair trade practices. As international tensions rise over trade imbalances, U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen asserted during her recent visit to China that America would not accept unrestricted Chinese export capacities, which threaten global industry viability. This concern extends beyond the U.S. to Europe and developing nations alarmed by China's surplus production. Expert, more companies likely to leave China as pressures grow. Recent developments have seen Apple and other multinational corporations shifting significant portions of their iPhone production from China to alternative locations such as India, Vietnam, and Mexico. This move, evidenced by Apple's $14 billion in iPhone production in India during the last fiscal year, mirrors a broader trend among global tech firms. These shifts are influenced by the principle of evolving comparative advantage and heightened political pressures, as companies seek to mitigate rising labor costs and reduce reliance on China amidst geopolitical tensions and human rights concerns. Shang Jin Wei, a professor at Columbia Business School, attributes the relocation primarily to economic factors. He notes that wages in China have increased to three times those in India and Vietnam, diminishing the cost benefits once gained from China's robust local supply chains. Additionally, the ongoing U.S. tariffs, initiated by Trump and continued under Biden, alongside restrictions on exporting critical tech components to China, have compounded the uncertainties for businesses operating there. The unpredictable policies of the Chinese Communist Party, including issues around intellectual property and forced technology transfers, further discourage maintaining operations in China. These factors have prompted significant entities like BlackRock to reassess their financial stakes in China, reflecting growing corporate apprehension about the Chinese market's stability. Christopher Tang, chair of the Business Administration Department at UCLA's Anderson School of Management, underscores the significant influence of political and diplomatic pressures alongside economic factors in shaping business strategies. The China Plus One strategy has gained popularity over the past decade as companies seek to diversify their manufacturing bases to mitigate the risks associated with operating in China, such as rising labor costs and political instability. The advent of the Trump administration in January 2017 and the subsequent escalation of the trade war in 2018 further spurred these movements. Additionally, Tang noted that humanitarian concerns have increased pressures from politicians and NGOs, encouraging firms to relocate production to countries like Vietnam, Thailand, and Mexico, the latter move being facilitated by the United States-Mexico-Canada Agreement, USMCA. However, Beijing's retaliatory measures, such as the ban on Micron technology chips and restrictions on the use of iPhones by government officials, pose new economic threats. These actions could have severe repercussions for U.S. companies that heavily rely on the Chinese market. For example, a Barron's report highlighted a decline in GM's market share in China from about 15% in 2015 to less than 10% in 2022, indicating a growing aversion among Chinese consumers to U.S. products as trade tensions escalate. Despite these challenges, the Chinese economy continues to grow at a rate double that of the U.S., suggesting that not all companies will withdraw in the short term. Nevertheless, the CCP's economic mismanagement and the volatile geopolitical climate are factors multinational companies cannot ignore. Tang stresses the importance of ongoing dialogue between the U.S. and China to navigate these complex issues, suggesting that the evolving trade dynamics and Beijing's responses could significantly reshape global economic and political landscapes. What is the greatest crime of the CCP today? On the evening of April 10, the documentary Medical Genocide, Hidden Mass Murder in China's Organ Transplant Industry was shown at Goldie Beacom College in Delaware, USA. The event was hosted by Rick Jensen, a local talk show personality, and followed by a lively discussion which was well received by attendees. Professor Jacob Levy from the Israeli Transplant Association features prominently in the film. He advises viewers to make an informed decision about belief, 
one must first acquaint themselves with the facts, which are laid out in published books and research studies. Once you delve into these, you'll find belief to be the only conceivable outcome. The documentary sheds light on the extensive organ transplant operations in China, highlighted by the following points. David Kilger, former Canadian Secretary of State for Asia-Pacific, recounted a haunting case, a patient traveled to China twice seeking a kidney transplant. The first visit yielded four unsuccessful matches, months later, a second visit resulted in a successful match after reviewing four additional pairs. Despite the patient's successful surgery, it came at the cost of eight lives. Professor Levy shared a 2005 case where a patient was advised by his insurance to undergo a pre-scheduled heart transplant in China. Levy questioned the ethics and feasibility of such prearrangements, highlighting the grim reality that such surgeries require the death of another on the same day. The International Transplant, China, Network Support Center website features a pricing schedule for organ transplants available to foreigners. This includes kidney transplants at $62,000, liver transplants ranging from $98,000 to $130,000, liver kidney transplants between $160,000 and $180,000, kidney pancreas transplants at $150,000, lung transplants from $150,000 to $170,000, heart transplants between $130,000 and $160,000, and cornea transplants at $30,000. David Kilger, after his in-depth examination of the CCP's systematized organ transplantation industry, noted, this system has been continuously operational, accruing annual revenues between $9 billion and $10 billion. The industrial-scale organ transplantation is widespread across China, serving as a significant financial resource. It has become a vast money-making enterprise, with numerous hospitals depending on it as a key economic foundation. In 2009, the average waiting time for kidney transplants was 1,191 days in the UK and 1,314 days in the US, compared to just weeks in China. The 2006 liver transplant registration report from China revealed that 27% were classified as emergency liver transplants, where the liver was sourced within days or hours. In 2006, a chief surgeon at the first affiliated hospital of Hunan University of Traditional Chinese Medicine published a study titled Factors Affecting Re-Kidney Transplantation, which included 50 cases. 46 of these patients had undergone two kidney transplants three had three, and one had four. Wang Lijun, a prominent CCP police officer, headed the only on-site psychological research center in China, which was recognized with the Guanghua Innovation Special Contribution Award for developing a new method of execution by injection. He acknowledged performing thousands of organ transplants. The CCP's persecution of Falun Gong began on July 20, 1999. He Xiaoshan, vice president of the first affiliated hospital of Sun Yat-sen University and a member of the China Organ Donation Committee expert group, during an interview revealed that liver transplants in 2000 had increased tenfold from 1999 and fivefold again by 2005. Over six years, there was a thirtyfold increase, aligning with the timeline of the CCP's crackdown on Falun Gong. On June 22, 2016, in Washington, Three independent investigators released a comprehensive 680-page report titled Bloody Harvest Slash the Slaughter, Updated Edition. The investigators were David Kilger, former Canadian Secretary of State for the Asia-Pacific, David Mattis, an international human rights lawyer, and Ethan Gutman, an American investigative journalist. They conducted a 10-year investigation into the CCP's practice of harvesting organs from living donors, examining extensive data from numerous Chinese transplant hospitals. Their findings estimated that between 2000 and 2016, China conducted approximately 60,000 to 100,000 transplant surgeries annually, potentially totaling up to 1.5 million, primarily using organs from Falun Gong practitioners. Mattis noted that their report heavily referenced CCP data. In the documentary, the investigators reflected on their findings. David Kilger commented, To my knowledge, 
China is the only country globally that industrially massacres its citizens to sell their organs under government oversight. David Mattis added, having studied the Holocaust, I see a parallel in China's actions, which represent a profound and limitless descent into moral corruption and extreme evil. Ethan Gutman remarked, when I started writing The Slaughter, I thought I was documenting history, but as I concluded, I realized this wasn't just history, organ harvesting continues to this day. It represents a new form of genocide. It's a defining challenge of our time, one we cannot ignore. The first international exposure of the CCP's organ harvesting from Falun Gong practitioners came in 2006, leading to Nobel Peace Prize nominations for investigators David Kilger and David Mattis. Subsequently, an increasing number of groups and experts have engaged with this issue. Over the last 18 years, Groups such as Doctors Against Forced Organ Harvesting, the CCP Forced Organ Harvesting Research Center, and the International Coalition to End Transplant Abuse in China have conducted extensive investigations. These studies have confirmed that the CCP's systematic organ harvesting, ordered by former leader Jiang Zemin and involving various government sectors, is a form of mass slaughter. A number of impactful documentaries have also been produced, shedding light on these violations. These include Ironclad Evidence, Unbelievable by Ken Stone, State Organs by Long Yang, and Human Harvest by Liam Li, also known as David's and Goliath. Together with Medical Genocide, the hidden mass murder in China's organ transplantation industry, these films expose the grim realities underpinning the CCP's secret of operations. This series of events underscores the CCP's long history of lethal conduct, continuing a century-long pattern of violence and human rights abuses. Mao Zedong's radical policies in the late 1950s and early 1960s triggered the most severe famine in Chinese history, which, as chronicled by former Xinhua News Agency reporter Yang Jixing in Tombstone, led to 36 million deaths and widespread cannibalism. The Cultural Revolution's death toll is described by Deng Xiaoping as astronomically high and impossible to estimate. In 1989, the Tiananmen Square massacre killed at least 10,000 people, based on British declassified documents. The persecution of Falun Gong, initiated by Jiang Zemin in 1999, involved large-scale organ harvesting from practitioners, making it one of the most heinous acts of violence in history, described as unprecedented evil on this planet. This ongoing atrocity is the most brutal since Hitler's massacre of the Jews in the 1930s. These acts constitute genocide, torture, and crimes against humanity. Significantly, Falun Gong is not just any normal Qigong but the teachings of Buddhism. Historically, persecuting Buddhism is considered an immense crime. According to the Epic Times, the CCP's greatest crime is destined for the harshest retribution, which is the prophesied demise of the CCP itself. Those responsible, burdened with these grave sins, are fated to eternal damnation under divine judgment. Over the past 18 years, as awareness of these crimes has spread, over 429 million Chinese have publicly disavowed the CCP, securing a hopeful future for themselves and their descendants through the three withdrawals, means quitting the Chinese Communist Party, the Youth League and the Young Pioneers. For those still unaware, it is crucial to discern the truth and make moral choices, distancing oneself from the evil of the CCP. Reflecting on the words of Martin Luther King Jr., the leader of the American Civil Rights Movement, accepting evil, even passively, equates to complicity. It's vital for those who understand this not to remain detached but to break away completely from the CCP's evil, ensuring they avoid calamity when the final reckoning comes. Don't forget to leave a comment in the section below to share your opinions on today's topic with us. Make sure to like and subscribe to see more interesting topics from China Truths.